Don't worry if you're a little bit confused. <laughs> this isn't a joke. Alpha 11 has just released to the public branch. No, not Alpha 10.6, Alpha 11. According to the experimental patch notes where it went from 10.6 to Alpha 11, it's because the version has piled up so many changes and additions that we think it is worth of the major version tag. So there we go. It is Alpha 11 because this does actually include a lot of stuff. As always, I will link to the official patch notes down below so you can have a read through them at your leisure. Uh, but in summary, which they've done very nicely for me here, thank you very much, Elion. Uh, Alpha 11 contains the new CPU points and tier system, a new flight model mechanic and techniques, pilot HUD, vessels docking any to any, which is pretty exciting actually, thruster rebalancing, base attack changes, new blocks from new actual block shapes, heavy windows, railings, and hangar doors, some new POIs as always, and a technical demo for multi solar systems. We'll come to that in a minute. So first of all, the new CPU tier system. Okay, so if you haven't seen my 10.6 patch notes video on this, let me quickly summarize it for you. The CPU system is a four tier system uh, that will help you better specialize your ships. It's and it's a technique of trying to sort of restrict size and, and uh, capability of different vessels in order to try and push the designer and creators to thinking more about what the ship is supposed to do primarily rather than just shoving every bit of tech the game has into a single piece of hardware. Now, the CPU numbers have gone through a few changes. The first screen I'm going to show you here is the CPU statistics screen of the Superlifter. A uh, prime example of one of those ships where every bit of tech has been shoved into one boat uh, to do everything, which, you know, as a, as a carrier it should do really, but um, we'll move on to that later. Here we can see the Superlifter is at tier 4 as highlighted in the gold near the bottom here. Uh, we can also see a little lower than that that the allocated CPU is actually 15 million rather than the allowed 10 million CPU points. On the right hand side we can see all the contributing factors so there is 15 million CPU points. You can see that the XL thrusters or 12 of them contribute over 6 million points alone followed by the larges so on and so forth down the list all the way down to the least contributing which is some crew <laughs> um, and also the blocks themselves combat steel in particular uh, in this case also contributes cpu tiers all in order to try and make you focus that build a little bit better now the super lifter here being over the cpu allocation means that it's going to have an impact on efficiency level i quickly switched the game back to survival mode we can see the efficiency level on the super lifter here is 69 percent that's because the CPU or the core is working harder than it's designed to. It's trying to allocate resources to 15 million CPU points when it only has the resources for 10. What this efficiency level means is that now this ship is going to be um, less efficient and less powerful because of this penalty. So it's going to turn slower, move slower, accelerate, stop slower. Things like constructors will work slower, generators will produce less power turrets will turn slower be less accurate all the elements of the ship are going to take a percentage drop in their effectiveness as a result of this so getting your builds as close to that cpu threshold as possible is definitely worthwhile if i take another look at my nightshade that i've uh, built towards the cpu system from 10.6 we can see it's got a 12,000 cpu point but it's got it's got a tier three core unit in it. So actually <laughs> it's well, it's got well over the required CPU points to operate and therefore its efficiency level is 100%. In fact, we could probably add some more gizmos uh, or reduce its uh, CPU core so it's using less energy and, and stuff like that. So going back to tier two would actually be better for this ship. To upgrade your ship or vessel to the different CPU tiers, uh, what you'll need to do is, aside from pl placing um, or spawning in your ship, you need to add a, what they're called CPU extenders. You can get these from the item menu in Creative. 
Uh, I'll come to where you can get them in survival in a moment. Um, but you can just place these extenders anywhere on the ship. They don't need to be touching the core, contrary to my last video on the subject. You can also add multiple different types of extenders depending on whether you want redundancy or not. They don't, you, they don't even need to be connected to themselves. You can just place them anywhere you like and they will contribute that overall CPU amount. Now, if you're not sure about how many extenders to place, in this diagram back in the CPU statistics page, you can see how many extenders to place for each tier. So obviously tier one being just the core itself, all the way up to tier four, requiring four of the tier four extenders. Now, if you've got old builds that you want to upgrade with the new CPU system, uh, much like I do here is the Reaver's Fate Mark II Plasma variant. Uh, if I have a look on the P menu here and go to CPU statistics, we can clearly see 121,000 CPU. That is in breach of even the highest tier of CPU and you'll probably find a lot of your ships are as well, especially the bigger, more functional ones in your library. The main contributing factor to this, again, you can have a look on the right hand side to see what it is. Here, it's we've got 27 RCSs in this thing that are going to be contributing a lot of points towards that 121,000 total. So this is related to all the thruster rebalancing that they've done, um, some of the aerodynamics, flight model changes that they've done in this update as well. What they've done is they've kind of changed how SVs especially, well, CVs and HVs as well, but I find to a lesser extent, SVs especially, how they work, um, how thruster placement, RCS's shape and size of the ship all contributes to its, its flight mechanics now. In order to get one of your ships back down to CPU limits, what you're probably going to have to do is go inside it in God mode here and remove a large number of its RCSs because RCSs no longer really contribute as much turn as they did before. Removing a lot of them, not all of them because they still do something, um, is going to help reduce that CPU number. Just reducing those ones there brought me down to 113,000. There's definitely more in here I can, I can remove um, and the space that you save by removing these RCSs can go back into uh, the CPU extenders, replacing the CPU extenders you're going to need to bring the ship in line with the CPU points. So removing those, 108,000. We could probably get away with that. So if we grab four extenders, we just need to now find a place to put them, but we should be okay because we just removed a bunch of RCSs from this thing. There we go, there's one. On the other side as well. Three, four. So with that, we should now find that it's now tier four, a hundred thousand. And if you're in creative mode like me, what you'll need to do is change mode back to survival, and then uh, wait for it to update with the new numbers. There we go, ninety-four point four percent efficient. So if we remove a few more RCSs, maybe, or we could remove things like deco or extra devices that we don't necessarily need, a bit of the oxygen tank, maybe a generator or two, maybe a fuel tank or two. Uh, you get the idea, just sort of trim it down a bit and you'll get to CPU points in no time. What that does to the performance of the craft by removing all those RCSs though, is, well, you will definitely notice a difference, but as you can see, the ship still performs as well as she did before removing those RCSs. Still turns very well and even at 90% efficiency she's pretty flexible. I could probably remove another couple of RCSs and still be very happy with that. So that's what you'll need to do in order to bring your ships in line with CPU. So I mentioned earlier where you're going to get these extenders from in your survival games. Well first of all you need to unlock them. They're going to be in your tech tree. First of all the tier 2 and of course 3 and 4 followed by that. Once you've unlocked these you can then build them in your constructors. These little I the colored icons next to each thing tell you which constructors can build them. So you can see here for the T2 CV extender, uh, can build it in a large constructor and an advanced constructor. However, the T3 and T4 subsequently can only be built in an advanced constructor. So if we head into our constructor here, we can see our extensions. 
and we can see that the tier two extensions require cores and flux coils flux coils require requiring satium and neo to build by the way the tier three however requires small optronic bridges for hv and svs but for the larger b uh, bases and cv extenders large optronic bridges now these are new items added to the game uh, and if you search inside your constructor you'll see that these components cannot be built they're not in here anyway but if we have a look at our item menu this is what they look like those are the smalls Optronic bridge and matrix and those are the large optronic bridge and matrix so you know what you're looking for they definitely do not appear in the constructor these items can only be found or purchased if you head over to your local Polaris dealer assuming you've uh, got reputation with them you can buy the small optronic bridge and matrix for a fair old price <laughs> 66,000 credits or 100,000 credits uh, it's not too difficult to come by that amount of money but you will need stuff to sell obviously in the first place uh, and this guy sells the largest considerably more 170,000 and 297,000 respectively um, again it shouldn't be overly difficult to get that amount of money especially when you start producing or getting a lot of boosts to sell uh, and the other option is of course like I said to find them for finding them well you're just gonna have to get lucky with the loot boxes and you're not gonna find these things in any of your basic white or yellow containers this thing is gonna be in red containers and even then uh, it's not even guaranteed I think these are just painted red rather than actually being the very rare container um, but yeah there's a small optronics bridge that uh, well <laughs> I went to every single POI on this planet, apart from these three down here. The weapons bunker here was the first container I found it in. So it really does at this point look like the Polaris are probably your best bet to get in these things fairly early on. Otherwise, you're going to have to go through a lot of POIs. And then there's a bit of a catch-22 with progression, because you kind of need a tier 3 vehicle to take on that many POIs. Or are you just going to be having a lot of repairs to do? Although it does appear that large optronic bridges at least do spawn in the ultra rare uh, epic containers as well. So there may be a little bit better chance if you're looting both red and the purples. But it's still pretty low. So how are you supposed to stay within the CPU limits but still create effective builds that's going to help you early in game before you can get to looting those things or even looting the stuff to sell to buy those things <laughs> yeah, there's a whole progression loop here that's going to take some adjustment i think standing in front of me is a small sv is that does that mean that's an ssv anyway it's an sv that i built when i was toying around with 10.6 when these cpu points came about but more importantly when the new flight mechanics came about now this is coupled with the aerodynamic system and the cpu system and the flight system and the hud all kind of working together to, to sort of change this sh this building uh in the game this thing as you probably noticed doesn't have any thrusters in the side in the front in the top i can tell you they're not in the bottom either there are only two thrusters in this thing that's it and a couple of rcs's but the important thing about this is the four missile launchers on the end here now what i'm going to use is the new aerodynamic and new flight mechanics to help me take on a couple of light xerax pois with well only two thrusters this will be interesting so when you get into a ship like this uh, I've, I've shaped it based on the new aerodynamic mechanics and i've also created a large surface area using the wings to give myself as much lift as possible and this is a very basic aerodynamic physics it's uh it's not real really it's it's very basic so if you're expecting full aerodynamic physics uh, i wouldn't rely on that it's a it's a little bit more simple than that anyway basically you give yourself enough forward momentum and enough surface area on the bottom and the ship will be able to uh, f basically fly itself you can then even just turn inertia off and it will sort of float along fairly casually that being said it will eventually fall to the ground uh, when it reaches a slow enough speed but we can see we're at five meters a second before it finally starts dropping uh, so you can save yourself some fuel here I'm now going to go and take this thing up against a couple of very lightly armed Xerox POIs that's going to give me that initial kind of loot that I need and just to clarify as well this ship is just 
the normal base tier one CPU. It doesn't have any extenders in it. It's just over uh, the CPU allocation, but it still has 100% efficiency, thankfully. Otherwise, this might be a little bit more difficult. I'm going to head straight towards these POIs here. They're going to shoot me up a lot, but I'm hoping that my speed can, uh, can at least take them by surprise. Here's a turret. We've got four missile launchers on this thing. I need to get relatively close and hope the lag doesn't screw me up too much. But there we go. I've taken that turret out and I managed to get out. I did take a hit, but it's possible. And that's just all with one thruster. Coming in for a second run. I unfortunately missed that one. I tell you what, it's going to take some practice shots, isn't it? Um, but there we go. That is one way of doing it. Obviously, I could probably get some more maneuverability and, and better maneuverability uh, if I didn't have four rocket launchers. If I only had two, I could probably use my other CPU points um, to maybe give uh, more thrusters in different directions and make this a little bit easier and a little less time consuming. But the, uh, the hit and run strafing kind of missile run technique is definitely one that's going to open up the ability to hit these POIs early on, I think. It's just going to take some practice. It's actually kind of fun, though. <laughs> so that brings me nicely onto the new HUD, uh, the new pilot HUD that you can see in action here. I think it especially looks good in first-person view. Uh, information is all the same as it was before. It's just sort of moved around a bit. Uh, but one thing you might notice is in the top right corner of my HUD there, you'll notice my max speed is now 70 meters per second, not the old 50 meters a second that it used to be. Uh, this is going to make SV travel a little bit more enjoyable, I think, and make scouting a little less daunting, especially on those bigger planets. Um, you'll also notice that on the left side is now where my height and altitude meters have moved to. Um, showing my distance to ground and to orbit. The right hand side has also got a strange circle on the bottom of it and that is the boost. So if I turn around here you notice my speed drops right down. I can use my boost to quickly get back up to speed. But yeah you'll notice the, uh, the HUD moves like a sort of more traditional fighter jet kind of HUD when you're banking and turning and, and pitching and yawing and stuff which is quite useful but you'll always have that zero line in the middle so that you can find the horizon again also uh, in the bottom right is some more changes as well showing your fuel uh, generator usage how much fuel you have of course how much oxygen you have and how much pentaxid and shield you have as well the, the shields is just above the toolbar I don't have any shields on this craft of course but it would be in blue if my shields were on there we go. That's a bit better, isn't it? The other thing to note as well is the cruise control has changed. So instead of shift W now, it's actually control and hold W. You'll see a little marker on the right hand side climbing up to the top there. Once it's 100% you can let go and that's your 100% cruise control. What that means is you can actually set cruise control to very low speeds. Uh, I've set my cruise control to 14 meters a second there for reasons I don't quite know yet, but you could do that now. The vessel docking system has been updated as well to include inter-vessel docking. So you can dock SVs to SVs, HVs to SVs, CVs to CVs, uh, and so on. So this is an SV uh, that I've been working on in my Chile Than Building streams. If you join me for those, they're on Saturdays now at 8pm UK time, either on Twitch and on YouTube. And um, we built this sort of thing here. This is an SV. Of course, it's a work in progress. Doesn't even have a roof yet. Uh, but it's also a proof of concept because in front of me here, I have a range of vehicles. Uh, we have the Nightshade here, which is, of course, an SV. And um, we're going to just go and park that onto this other SV here. We can uh, figure it out. Reverse, man. Reverse. I'm going to just attach it to one of these spontoons I suppose you call them and then just level it out so it's a little bit prettier there we go so that's an SV attached to another SV um, and then we've got the old EXO one earth mover here which is I haven't actually updated uh, at all for CPU so this is a miracle that it's still moving let's see if we can attach this as well yep there we go and uh, I think we could probably get the old skimitar on here as well. Let me just make sure. Have you actually got a docking pad skimitar? No, you don't, do you? 
Okay, that's the skimmer. Kind of haphazardly docked on there, but it's, it's docked, so this should work. And there we go. An SV um, flying around. Two HVs and another SV. Uh, and this thing will get it into orbit, no problem as well. I've got a bit of a problem with my power usage when in things are docked. 150 odd percent power usage there. So, still do some modifications and some refining of the design, but hopefully that a nice proof of concept for you. You can now interdock things. In fact, I saw on uh, Excalibur's stream that he created a small mining CV to dock, dock to his main CV. Looked very cool. And I think the uh, the possible designs that this opens up are going to be amazing. I really look forward to seeing how the workshop in general reacts to this change. There's a new galaxy map or solar system map depending on how you look at it and it's frankly terrible <laughs> I'm sorry Elion uh, please revert this is really difficult to use it's really difficult to see things and also when you click on a planet and then click planet info it does nothing the only way to get planet info is go to the sectors list and then do planet info which uh, please bring back the old sector map until this thing is fixed that the mouse controls are inverted to what they should be making navigation really confusing if you turn left or right it banks the camera around which means you need to use Q and E to reset your position I just don't understand how or why you've made this change it's awful sorry to be blunt that's my general feedback please change it back this is crap <laughs> <laughs> it's just not good. It's just not good. Old sector map, please. I don't mind the new look. That's absolutely fine. But can you fix the controls? I just oh, hate it. Hate it! Anyway, some changes to base attacks now means that the uh, Xerox Hacking Tool has a slightly longer range. They've also disabled the Talon Shaman from being able to hack. That's probably going to come back another time. I think the disable is only temporary. And of course, anything that makes base attacks a little bit more difficult, in my opinion, is a good thing. A bunch of new blocks and devices have been added in, including new railings, double railings, which is especially helpful, and new ventilator blocks in all sorts of different shapes and sizes, especially loving the rounded um, cylinder ones, as well as the sort of half block curved and slopes as well. I think they're just going to come really handy. And we finally got some heavy glass in various curved and corner shapes as well, uh, which is going to be helpful creating those nice big windows. Some curved and diagonal armored doors are going to be especially useful for those uh, tight to compact ship designs, I think. And they've given us a few new ramp blocks. <laughs> this thing's huge. Uh, but they've removed the sort of, do you remember there was a little kind of weird lip thing at this end they removed that so it's now just a straight up ramp which is nice additionally svs now get to benefit from the t2 thrusters the uh the hover vessels had these for a while the medium t2s the large uh thrusters as well they've now been added to svs one thing i forgot to mention earlier when we were talking about docking to docking is that hvs can now operate in space providing they have a gravity field to do it in this is the spark on board of the superlifter in orbit around the planet. And as you can see, she operates, although she is at a much reduced speed. Only three meters per second is the max speed. And uh, I'm gonna try and take her off the ramp here so you can see what happens. Let's go down the ramp and off the ramp. I am now stuck. <laughs> I have no ability. Ah, tell the light. You just point her up. There you go. Oh no, no, gravity's taken over. <laughs> so you do have to be careful where you move your HVs to in space. Like I said, they are influenced by the ship's gravity field, so you drive off the side of the ship, you're going to have to fetch an SV to go and get it again. <laughs> but should open some interesting orbital and planetary docking opportunities for your HVs. As with most updates, they've added some new POIs, some snow variants of civil POIs and Polaris POIs, and of course snow planets, a bunch of orbital wreckages for you to explore, and some other basic POIs. Creative mode has 
Also had a bit of an overhaul as well with the new space station, the MS Titan up into orbit to show off and the new Hall of Creation, which has a bunch of information and help for new players on how all the systems work and how to build stuff. If you load up the default Akua Omicron scenario and can figure out how to use the god awful new sector map, you can take a look at the first iteration of the new multi-solar system mode of Imperion. Finally, Imperion Galactic Survival <laughs> can finally earn the name Galactic. <laughs> We're starting to get a bit of a galaxy to form. Uh, so you can see multiple suns here and warp lanes in between these different solar systems and stuff. This is just the default Akua Omicron scenario. It's currently not working in default uh, random scenarios. Um, this is just a sort of demo how it will work. So I think everyone will get the same layout, I believe. Um, but yeah, have a look at it. Figure it out. It looks pretty good. And of course, no big update like this is complete without a bunch of optimization changes, little fiddly bits, and a huge, huge list of bug fixes. <laughs> check it out, guys. Like I said, patch notes down below if you want to check it out for yourself. Otherwise, just make sure your game is updated to the latest release version. You don't need to sign up for any betas or anything. Uh, it is just the release version and give Alpha 11 a go. And of course, as always, Elion, I'm very keen on feedback from you guys. So make sure you check out the feedback forums as well. Known issues, etc, etc. That's it from me. That's Alpha 11. Like I said, be interesting to see how the workshop reacts to all these changes and how <laughs> you'll get your gameplay and your play style changes as well. Because, well, this is a big one and... It's a game changer. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. As always, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.